water's health challenges, and you said the world has no origin. And it was like this really big moment for me where all of a sudden I thought, whoa, I don't have any um, culpability, guilt, in creating this health challenge out there. And then my mind would go a few other places where it would go, <laughs> and uh, it would say, ah, but the script is already written. And everything is a manifestation of holy spirit, of holy will. And there's no one I encounter and nothing I see that's not myself and just a reflection of my thoughts. And it's like I can sort of hold the, the world has no origin and hold those, it, it, but it, it, there's, there's this really uncomfortable oscillation in myself where I don't know where I am. And that the world has no origin was exquisite because I could feel all the guilt drop away for an instant. Yes, and it's so beautiful that you could feel it. And in fact, what we could do is like, we could say, my daughter has a health issue or something like that. You know, you can, if you roll it back, has a health issue. You know, I was just convinced by the Holy Spirit that actually I could really, really finally see that there were no health issues in the world. It was a beautiful realization. I was like, oh God, what a trick. There are no health issues in the world. I remember it started out with, you know, health is inner peace. Mm -hmm. And my, only my, my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. He's bringing it first to attack thoughts. But that's not the world. You know, he's, he is saying that my thoughts are images I've made, but once I started to come inside more and more, I thought, hmm, this is a big smoke screen and there are no health issues in the world. So we can take off the last part, my daughter has health issues. We can roll that off. Clop, we take the sword. When you really can go into it deep enough, you actually really can see that there are no health issues in the world. How, how so? Well, well, it's because the world is causes. Because the world, nothing's outside of my mind, because that's the whole teachings of the Course is the world doesn't have a cause. If it had a real cause, it would be, it would have a real effect, and then we'd be stuck. <laughs> and we can walk through the gestapo. So, right? Yeah, I but then, I'm, I also want to roll it back to, my daughter has a health issue. So that's one thing, is just that realization that's there. But then when you roll it back even further, you get back to the daughter part. And I just, you were just at my gathering the other night, where right, the woman, right. the tall woman stood up and went, Yikes! I'm doing lesson number one in the course, and I'm like, my eyes are moving around the room, and I'm like looking at my photographs of my daughter, my children. Does it mean anything? You know, nothing I see means anything. You just let your eyes move around the world and rest, you know. She's like, yeah, you see, so there's like, whoa, this was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's one thing with health issues, but then, now my, now my daughter, you see, we're, we're just working it back with a sentence, my daughter. And then, if you go a little bit further back, my my daughter. You know, you really start to see that, that there's a self-concept issue going on here with the mini-me. And the mini-me is like taking everything for its own. My house, my car, my bank account, my job, my, 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 my. You know, remember the Linda Ronstadt song, Love is a Rose, but you better not pick it. Only grows when it's on the vine. Handful of thorns and you know you've missed it. Mm. Lose your love when you say the word mine. As soon as, it, it's beyond health issues, it's beyond daughter. It's, it's this mind part, you know, it's this thing in possession. It thinks it's possessing an individual separate identity. And now it's pulled in all these images, all these projected cosmic images, into my galaxy, or my solar system, my planet, you know. Oh, there's a lot of planets. There's really a lot of planets. Actually, we have to be honest, there's a lot of planets. But my planet, Earth, it's my, that's what you have to go at, to really be free of this insidious, kind of possessive alien that's, that's trying to take control in the mind. I mean, I've never taught that the world is God manifesting. No. That's the thing, I teach, I teach the opposite. I teach ultimately that manifesting is impossible. That's why I, it's not so popular, but 
I'm not interested in popularity. I'm interested in truth, and joy, and love, and happiness. You know, it, and the, even the distinction between thoughts and manifesting thoughts is that forms could be different. No, the teachings of the Course are my thoughts or images I have made. I have invented the world I see, meaning the ego and the world that the ego made are the same. And the ego has no origin. I, I say the world has no origin, and the ego has no origin. I mean, that's one of the biggest questions I get. I call it the top question around the world. Who created the ego? It's like saying, who created the devil? I said, it has no creator. If God is, is all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful, why would an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful creator create an ego? What would be the purpose of creating a death wish? You know, and then if you start to say the world is synonymous with the ego, you can start to realize that you won't find the solution in the world because the world is causeless. This is getting down to the deepest teachings. That's why God is not a creator of hypotheticals either. Linear time seems to be filled with many, many, many hypotheticals which assume that cause and effect are apart. The only way you can have hypotheticals is have a gap between cause and effect. But what, what did Jesus teach? The Father and I are one. The Father, God is cause. The effect, Christ, is the Son. Father and I are one, means there's the same spirit. There's no difference between cause and effect in heaven. And if heaven is pure love, joy, peace, happiness, and if I seem to be trying to find love, peace, joy, happiness, in a world of hypotheticals, in a world of fragments, in a world of idle images, what do you think your chances are of finding perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect happiness in, in a world of fragmentation? What do you think your chances are of finding peace on the battleground when we're constantly called in the Course to go above the battleground? You know, even Einstein said you can't solve the problem at the level of the problem. He, Einstein would say, you're not going to find a solution to anything. And here comes Einstein along. You know, you've been a chemist, you've been a scientist. Einstein comes along and he just totally pops holes in Newtonian physics. You know, Newto Isaac Newton said that time was a constant. Most people still believe in Newtonian physics, you know, they still believe time is constant. Everyone still believes that if you had little second hands on your watches, that if you're in China, or Alaska, or Russia, or whatever, that those, if you had these clocks, that they would all measure the same time. The time is constant all over the world. There's the same movement. One second is one second is one second. So, oh, Einstein came along and said, no it isn't. He said, time is, is relative. It's, it's connected to this space thing, and they're both relative, and that's what they've discovered now about black holes and all kinds of things. They've even taken clocks, atomic clocks, and they take them up in supersonic jets, and they, they have a clock on Earth, and then they fly a clock around the world, an atomic clock, a very precise clock, around the world, same atomic clock, very precise, and they fly one in a jet plane around the world, and then they take them out and see if the clocks have the same time. They don't. They don't have the same time. Time is not constant. It's entirely relative. And, and I would say the same thing is, we can't find truth in the illusion. Jesus says over and over, don't try to bring the truth into the illusion. You have all these synagogues and sacred rivers and sacred cows and sacred elephants and everything, sacred people, <coughs> sacred saints, and this is the man of God, no that's the woman of God. He said, no don't try to bring the truth into the illusion. Bring all of your illusions to the truth and then the illusions will disappear. And it gets pretty abstract, and what you're saying is, it gets pretty intense when you start to come back to that perspective. Because the ego feels like it's being annihilated in that abstraction. It wants definitions. Oh, no, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a chemist, I'm this, I'm of this vocation. You know, that's what people put on their resumes. They put all their concepts out there, and they're trying to hold on to those concepts, because it's very frightening to not have a concept of the self, to the ego it is. It's break time. Mm -hmm.